People think that there are shortcuts to happiness, but earning money comes with its own slew of new problems and responsibilities. The truth is that money will never buy you happiness, with a few caveats. Today, I'm collaborating with TinyBuild to explore whether I can establish a dry vegetable empire in one year. If you don't know it, Cartel Tycoon is a game simulation about selling dry vegetables to help everyone get healthier. If you want to check it out, you can go ahead and click on my link in the description. They just released a major research update to the game that contains unfathomably branching labyrinthine paths of knowledge. There's also more narrative dynamics that influence your relationships with your lieutenants. Some of them good, some of them bad, but most of them bad. I commenced by incarnating in the world. The agrarian life was good to me, and I earned more money than you could ever possibly imagine. Oodles of dollars in one year. It was the 31st of December. 1989. In the Jurassic mists of a land long before most of you were born, we didn't even have anything yet. I decided to make my fortune doing something altruistic for humanity. Have you ever walked around a supermarket and thought to yourself, everything I eat is just garbage. And if you are what you eat, then I'm garbage. I was going to start a business to put an end to this way of thinking. Off the grid in a slightly sketchy, unnamed country somewhere south of the border, I began to set out the devices for my master plan. Every good villainous looking tough guy in these scenarios seems to have an army of truck drivers who will follow his every beck and call. And I was no exception. Seemingly out of nowhere, an army of truck drivers materialized out of the void of the multiverse and laid out the plans for eight vegetable farms. No modern international corporation could do better. Answer me this, Amazon.com. Can you summon demonic truck drivers from a portal to Narnia? I didn't think so. Instead of planting something like candy, we cultivated a healthier alternative. Nothing but fresh grown vegetables. Oh, how I love them. I reach for them liberally on my plate whenever mother cooks. Throughout the rest of the month, we lower unemployment and create affordable housing. So much fun to do social good, spreading health and wealth. If health were a drug, I would be in jail. That is fun until we make the unfortunate realization that health and wealth are both very expensive. Unfortunately, we'll need to use this aerodrome to export some co candy to America pro uh, or some somewhere else. And that will help support our vegetables, fresh and red. Goodbye, plane. Whither you go, I will be with you. And so on a morally ambiguous note, we began our empire. If it allowed us to grow vegetables, you'll understand that our struggle was one of utilitarianism. It turns out to be a not-so-crazy argument, right? John Stuart Mill's philosophical treatise, Utilitarianism, tells us that it's okay to do a little bit of bad stuff, as long as the good stuff cancels out the bad, or something like that. Sure, it's debatable. For example, Although it would raise everyone's total sum happiness in town if you baked everyone delicious muffins, it's certainly not worth even a single person's life. Can you imagine a world where utilitarianism governed all of our ethical decisions? Utterly nonsensical and dehumanizing. But this was a much lower stakes situation in which I think it's safe to say that it applies liberally. So in the month of January, we grew mostly vegetables, but also a few um, muffins. Delicious, addictive muffins, which ruin your life if you eat too many. Cartel Tycoon isn't so much about being a tycoon, it's more like, Cartel, please don't ask me what I do for a living. Who in their right mind, after all, would say that, unless if they wanted to go directly to jail, faster than Monopoly. Nonetheless, just as we all see the logic behind the reasons and decisions of, say for example, Walter White from Breaking Bad, I still considered myself one of the good guys. But not quite with the same pomp, rainbows, and bombaciousness as, say for example, Roller Coaster Tycoon. In order to hide the production of co candy from the government, we put them behind the vegetable farms, the perfect camouflage. Nothing to see here, just growing vegetables on this farm. Move along. And we exchanged large suitcases containing cold, hard ca vegetables. If you just ignore 99% of what's back here, it looks like nothing suspicious is going on at all. By mid-April, the company had grown so much that the co candy farms were no longer inconspicuous. They dwarfed the nearby city. And despite the fact that I didn't pay my lieutenant who loyally completed deliveries to the nearby aerodrome for me day after day. They were unwavering in their commitment and feared how much they loved me. And we found a niche in the market selling onions. Highly addictive onions. At last we beat Uber to the punch by establishing Taxi Rapido, a far superior service to any app-based rideshare program. Taxi 
rapido, take me to school. Thus, we peed out money, soaring from a very sketchy hotel in Fascani out onto all of the uh, onion farms. Here's number one. Thus did we construct our network. It felt nice to carve paths through the jungle. I kept my lieutenants in line by threatening and they loved me. So I kept hiring more. We researched science, but we had a new problem. Too many vegetables. We built an important research facility, and we were intimidated by the amount of research. We nearly doubled the output of our onions, and we dumped the vegetables on the ground. Now we could pave the way for expansion to the west. Can you imagine the intensity of my annihilation upon cutting open the ribbon? to begin three new farms? It felt amazing. My lieutenants wanted me to show ambition, so I became very defensive. We upgraded the farms, improving the dirt to valuable stick technology. Instead of shacks, now we lived in corrugated metal huts. Around the month of June, I began to wonder what was happening to all of the money. There was less and less of it with the passing of each day. I learned that Taxi Rapido was not actually so rapido, and our attempts at running an organized ring of cr veganism commune were slowly coming to a halt. Where was the money? I thought I had it in the hotel, but it turned out that my farmers had been burying all of the money beneath the fields. Rather than requesting that my lieutenants deliver truckfuls of goods for delivery, a new typical order might sound something like, can you go to the farm and dig up $16 buried beneath the soil? Then bring it to the aerodrome to pay the pilot? These sounded more like quests in Zelda than a legitimate job description. It was making a mockery of my profession. One can only dig up so many shovelfuls of $16 before succumbing to madness and quitting a job. However, quit is another way of saying be assassinated. That is, all of my lieutenants quit. I'll let you decide whether that means they actually quit or mysteriously vanish back into Narnia from whence they came. But I wouldn't be a very good dr pizza delivery service if I answered that question outright. One thing was true. I was alone. Now forced to pay the property taxes for a plethora of highly inefficient farms where feral farmers were literally burying money underneath the ground. But you know what they say. Sometimes when you need a job done right, you've got to do it yourself. I sprang to action. What if I, Felix Viho, had done the job myself? Would I have done better? As if I had reloaded my save. Suddenly, it was once again January 1st, 1990. I found myself in possession of $70,000. Don't question it. Magic is real. This time, I was alone. I was organized. And I was a wily devil, full of calculations in my head. Determined to try hard my way through this run, I used my liberal arts to degree to decide how far the warehouses should be. And then I undertook the construction of several uh, onion farms. With the hacienda completed, I was prepared to pay my people and my farms with cash rather than unfulfilled promises this time. I would be a good man. Instead of my first two clowns for lieutenants, I selected a gentleman of far greater reliability, whose resume suggested much better executive functioning skills. Business boomed. We were barely breaking swimming in cash. Though, once again, much as they always had, my lieutenants became even more venomous than the sinister villain Iago from William Shakespeare's tragedy Othello. Each day I would rise from slumbers in my hotel, examining charts about how well I was doing, but always being told by Tony Quintero that I wasn't cool enough to hang. This began to weigh on my self-esteem, and I began to invest in larger and larger buildings to overcompensate for being peer pressured about my personal shortcomings in business. Tony Quintero slowly began to take over by sitting in a house alone and asking for a raise. He was very convincing. I agreed to give him a raise to $315 a day. It wasn't long before we were in the red again. He's just such an agreeable man. Who could refuse? My existence devolved into one not too dissimilar from that of my grandmother, who during the 1980s was cited by several family members shuttling cash on extended trips to and from the bank around in her Volvo, seeking a higher yield in various retail banking CDs. Ultimately, my network was still somehow losing money every day. So, to make ends meet, I decided to rob ask for donations from a bank to make ends meet. It was successful. I stand by everything I did. Even when I brutally mur invited Tony Quintero out to dinner, I listened to him beg for his life macaroni until his death dessert. I don't know what to say or what to think or how to behave, but damn it, all I wanted to do was sell people delicious, nutritious vegetables, really improve their lives, 
But the world is a mean, dirty place sometimes, filled with people who refuse to eat my goddamn vegetables. I won't allow it. And from now on, we serve death in this ambiguously sketchy country somewhere south of the border. Policia and Hacienda be damned. Me and Taxi Rapido are taking our business elsewhere, someplace people appreciate our business. Goodbye, Tony Quintero. Goodbye, Fascani. I'll be at a taxi stop standing next to Travis Bickle, staring at strangers from out a window near a little yellow cab, waiting for my cash cab to arrive. Once again, there's a major update to the research in the Lieutenant narrative system, so check out the link in the description for all the details. As always, a heartfelt thanks to my patrons, who are sitting in Foscani right now, I think. A major thanks to Tiny Build and Moon Moose for sponsoring this video. I do appreciate it. Go check it out. I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. Until next time, my friends.